Hi guys, I'm Chris Norwood and I'm on a journey to hear every song ever recorded and this is going to be an album review of the new Corey Taylor solo album CMFT. Some confusion about what that stands for. I believe Corey Taylor's middle name is Martha Flanagan. I think that's what that stands for. So, I'm Chris Norwood. I'm on a journey to hear every song ever recorded. And here we are with another album review. I've been a fan of Mr. Taylor's that sounded like a disappointed sigh. It wasn't. It's super late at night. I'm tired. I've been a fan of Mr. Taylor's vocal and writing style since way back in 99 when I first heard Wait and Bleed by Slipknot. Had no idea what he looked like at the time, only uh, what came out of the vocals and that he was killing it at the vocals. And Slipknot are my number 24 favorite band and Stone Sour are my 36th favorite band. So Corey Taylor's all over the place in my musical listening habits. Uh, I've seen Slipknot in concert. That was a lot of fun. One of the last shows I got to see other than Cold, which is a really great show too. And his books are pretty good. Uh, not not my favorite author by any means, but some, some decent books out there. Uh, his solo touring has been a source of interest for me as well. Uh, so naturally, I was really excited about this solo album coming out. And uh, 2020 and, and next year seems like it's going to be the year of solo records. We've got, uh, you know, Corey Taylor's doing this. You had the Killers kind of, uh, a lot of them going on infinite hiatus. You had uh, Shine Downs doing the Smith and Myers thing. Um, some more. There's some. There's several bands doing that. Green Day. Um, their lead singer is doing a lot of solo material. So this is a new thing. It's kind of a positive thing coming out of COVID. You got these uh, all these different musical projects. And there was a huge buildup for this record for a long time. A lot of talk. Um, and this has been something that's kind of happened with a lot of Corey Taylor's musical projects. Um, it's good for a band or an artist to build up what they've done. Uh, but I've always felt like Corey kind of led us down the wrong path um, about what albums would sound like. Uh, when Stone Sour reactivated, it, it, he made it sound like Slipknot was going to go heavier and harder and Stone Sour was going to be this more lighthearted affair. It's not the case. In fact, on Volume 3, Slipknot kind of went more lighthearted. And in Stone Sour's records, they were always kind of hard-hitting and heavy. Um, so, um, you know, with Stone Sour and Slipknot, you've got a lot of material coming out of, of this one person. And uh, Corey Taylor's solo album, it definitely suffers from the same thing, particularly when he talked about the genre being dead, or, or genres being dead, and how anybody can do anything musically. And, you know, I kind of got that idea from the singles, where one was a certain kind of music and another was a different type of song. Don't get me wrong, this record does have a lot of things going on but it is a hard rock record overall it's actually uh, 47 minutes and 47 seconds which is interesting I'm not sure if that was done on purpose or not there's not a lot of information on this record out right now it did just come out yesterday so I've given it several spins now and let's just jump right into the track listing shall we Okay, kicking things off is Highway, The Devil's Number. It's fun, it's fast, very promising introduction to the new solo Taylor. And uh, we're going to 
to kind of keep track of the stylistic choices of each song just because I do feel like that it this album kind of it does jump around a little bit but it does stay focused on one main idea and we'll talk about that in this review Highway 666 is it's a traditional rock song to me that's the vibe that I'm getting right off the bat there's loud guitars there's loud drums there's loud instruments but it's traditional rock and roll that's what I am hearing with Highway 666 Black Eyes Blue is a is one that we had you know we've had it for a while and I'm glad that this one's been around for me to get to know it and to be familiar with because it did take me a long time as with some of the other singles did not like them when I first heard them I feel like a lot of people felt that way with this record where they're like oh my goodness what is he doing why does it sound this way but black eyes blue it's you know it's a mid-tempo pop rock song and it, it really managed to make a real flip, a real 360 for me. It went from something that I hate to one of my favorites on the record so far. I haven't gotten extremely familiar with the other songs yet after, you know, maybe four listens in. But let's just keep on going. I made my notes after a while I was listening to the album. So it's pretty fresh in my mind. <coughs> Next up is Samantha's Gone. This is one of my favorite unfamiliar songs on the record, and it's a welcome change of pace. It's a, it is a straight up rock and roll tune like the others, but it's got a little bit of a country flair to it. It's fun, and it's also, for me, it's kind of funny to try to imagine that this is a Slipknot record, and they've just completely went off the rails of giving a crap try it like pretend that samantha's gone is the new slipknot single and people are going what is this what is happening um the only thing i don't particularly like about this is the rhymes he rhymes gone with gone with gone with gone I noticed that almost immediately off the chorus is that that's he's rhyming gone four times and that's an issue that kind of shows up on this record throughout uh, like from this song and then some later songs where the repetition of the chorus or even the verses is just a little bit a little bit much like maybe you could have wrote some more lyrics that's uh, one of my few complaints on this record Samantha's Gone is not a bad song. It's, I feel like it could be a potential single coming on down the line. The next one, I'm not even sure how to say this. Miney, 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 Miney Lou. Or Miney, Miney, Miney Lux. What does that mean? What is a Miney Lux? And why is Corey Taylor inflecting his voice to sound like such a dork? I don't know the answer to either one of these things, but we're four tracks in and we've got yet another song that sounds like classic rock. And you know what? It's well written, it's well performed, and another uh, really amazing uh, guitar performance on this one. It's insane. I can't find the credits on this album uh, to see who's playing the instruments. If you guys know, please let me know because I'm loving this guitar sound. And uh, maybe this guy could join Slipknot. You know, maybe he could join Stone Sour at some point. I don't know. But if you know, please, please feel free to, to please let me know. Um, this is a, what? Like I said on a previous song, repetition takes a little bit of the energy away from this otherwise really great song. Um, could have used some more lyrics. Next up is Halfway Down. Um, this one is pure classic rock territory, and it's one of the better sounding songs on the record. This is where you really hear the distinction between this music and Stone Sour's music. The guitar tones 
and the even cleaner vocals than we've ever had from Corey Taylor previously are really nice. So halfway down, one of the better tunes in my opinion. Coming up next is an interesting one called Silverfish. I'm not sure what that title is about. But this is the first real sonic detour on the record. And, um, you know, this has been a pure 100% rock album so far. Now you get into Silverfish, which I, I would love to know the reference point for that title. And this is a slow burner in the style of Soundgarden in every way. If you like Soundgarden, you will like Silverfish. Not sure about that title again. If you know, please share. Let's move on. Let's move to Kansas, people. So we, you know, we've had again, even with the Silverfish switch up of styles, it's still been rock and roll, and you know, grunge is is classic rock at this point, right? So we started with five straight up rock tunes and a uh, five rock tunes and a grunge resurrection. So you got just rock song after rock song, and Kansas changes things up yet again still in the rock and roll format but in a, uh, a fully realized pop 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 not pop punk that'll come later pop rock sound 90s pop rock this is right up my alley it's it, in a lot of places this album does not sound it does sort of sound like stereotypical rock but it's such a fun listen and it's so felt so fell well made that it's almost like a strength instead of a weakness. 90s forever. Okay, I'm actually kind of figuring out how I feel about this record as I'm, you know, reviewing it. And it's, uh, I gotta say, I'm liking CMFT the more and more that I think about it. Coming up next is gonna be Culture Head. This is one of the singles that came out uh, prior to the album. Another hard rock tune. And while he has stayed clear and out of the lanes of the other bands that he's been in on the first seven song, this one does start to sound like Stone Sour a lot. It's not an insult. Um, it could fit on any of their records that come after Come Whatever May, in my opinion. And uh, that's a compliment. That's a really good compliment. Uh, but this is my least favorite right now, Culture Head. Not a bad tune, but at this point in the record, I'm kind of wanting to hear something wildly different, something more experimental, or something that hasn't been done before. And I, you know, sitting at like track eight, I, I didn't want to hear a Stone Sour rehash. So sorry, Culture Head. You're a decent tune, decent hard rock tune, but nothing really beyond that, in my opinion, right now. Maybe a few listens from now, I'll feel differently. But let's just move on to an interesting, lots of interesting titles here. Kind of, some of them are a little bit clunky, but they're interesting. Everybody Dies on My Birthday? Huh? If Culture Head was veering into Stone Sour Sonic material everybody dies on my birthday is veering into slipknot funhouse mirrors uh cory taylor starts growling like a madman in a mask on this one and you know what i like it i can't wait for more background information on these and these song meanings definitely a heavier moment on this otherwise kind of standard rock outing Again, not a bad thing, just kind of the vibe I'm getting from this is it's a standard rock album. And, you know, Corey Taylor hasn't given us a standard rock album before. So I think this is his, you know, his kind of, you know, standard need to get this out of the way kind of thing. So the next song is the Maria Fire. We've heard uh, Maria mentioned, or Marie, we've heard Marie, Maria, Saint Marie. And a good album knows when to let off the gas and slow down when needed. Um, the Maria Fire is another slow burn, and it takes us into some new areas 
with some southern textures and some new kind of poppy vocals. Uh, the guitar is front and center on the track, and this one has a really great Almond Brothers style solo uh, that's really good. The chorus is a little grating and repetitive, but gosh darn, that guitar work makes up for it. It's crisp. The laughing is okay. Passable laughter. So, the next track is one of the most interesting on the record in terms of sonic exploration and it's simple it's called home again kind of repetitive in the lyrics but this one's powerful i love me a good ballad guys and you should too this is being compared on other uh, reviews of this album people are saying that this is the next snuff but even better i wouldn't go that far but i do hear it i do hear that snuff would be what the only thing that Corey Taylor's done close to this and maybe this will surpass Snuff but I don't know I'm not going that far yet um, he learned to pee uh, he learned to pee when he was a child but Corey Taylor learned to play the piano specifically to make this song and specifically to play it I believe it's it's for his wife his fourth wife I you know Good luck. Good luck. That's, that's crazy. I've, I've been there twice. I, I get it. Um, so he learned this song. He learned to play it on piano. It's sweet. It shows off his vocal prowess in a way that we haven't really heard before. It's very clean vocals. Very basic, simple, piano-driven love song. If you don't like that, you won't like this. It's a piano-driven Love song, pure and simple, repetitive, but good. And most music's repetitive, right? Well, coming in next, there's this, this jarring transition from home, this just piano and vocals, into this wild, crazy flutes and every instrument's ever with uh, rock and rap and everything and pop just all blended, buddy, okay? Blended together. CMFT must be stopped. I guess what could kind of be considered the title track, if there was one, CMFT must be stopped. Very jarring, just bah! Ah, ah, ah. Oh! Was that jarring? That's how jarring this, this transition is. There's no transitioning. It's just slow love song to my wife. Insanity with rapper after rapper after rapper. There's three rappings on this, this, this title track of some kind. And just like Black Eyes Blue, I keep wanting to say Behind Blue Eyes. I was appalled when I first heard this. It had the stupid title. Stupid. It just. It seemed stupid. It seemed annoying, and it was clunky. Uh, the fifth or sixth time around, it, it starts to get pretty good. I realized what he was going for, and I finally got it. I kind of wish there was more hip hop on the record, because uh, this is a lot of fun once you really get into it and try to start learning those raps. Working on it. Couldn't do it right now. Maybe uh, maybe in a future video, I'll do like an acoustic or an electric cover of CMFT Must Be Stopped. I could do C CMFN Must Be Stopped. I could do my own version and get my own rappers on it. Hey, that's a good idea. Might do it. CM, CMFN Must Be Stopped. Pretty close. Could be good. Um, let's see what we got. A lot of fun once you once you get your mind around what this is supposed to be. And uh, again, behind all the crazy rapping and the bars, it's that pure rock and roll sound that's just consistently painting the background behind this solo record. It's that's exactly what this is. It's a rock and roll record. 
coming in next is another really interesting track, European Bathroom Song. I had to look up the lyrics to this one, guys. I could not understand a single word of it, and that's because there are no words. There are vocals, but they are chanting letters extremely fast. And if you go to azlyrics.com and look this song up, European Bathroom Song, you'll see what I'm talking about. This is the craziest lyrics I've ever heard. It's spelling out, uh, do not flush something into the toilet, and then it's spelling out provide, and then it's spelling out bin, and then it's repeating that, and then it's screaming about European bath, bath, bus, European bus bathroom something. Uh, so what this song sounds like is Garage Inc era Metallica blazing through some good old Misfits covers. Uh, even with AZ lyrics, this one is going to be impossible to sing along to, guys. That's not an insult. It's I'm a punk rocker at heart and soul, and uh, that punk rock soul. Nothing like it. And this is punk rock. So this is Again, it's still classic kind of rock, you know, grunge, pop rock, hard rock, rock and roll. It, it's all in that same vein, but this one is very punk rock, very speed, very fast, very crazy, and uh, I don't think it's obscene. There's, you know, there's a few songs with a few F words, of course. Uh, aside from Volume 3, I think Corey Taylor really loves his F-words, right? Even on that one that was supposed to be clean, there was a few minor obscenities in Volume 3 by Slipknot. But let's get back to Corey Taylor on his solo record. So, Flush, Flush, Flush. You'll get it when you listen to the album. There's laughter, there's toilets flushing. Uh, there's a drop of hip-hop on the record. There's a smidge of country twang. There's some grunge. There's some pop rock. There's some different things fused in the mix. I heard that there was some jazz. I didn't really hear it in, in some of the tracks. I heard pop rock, grunge, country, and hip-hop. And overwhelmingly, rock and roll. Just classic rock and roll. It's got a goofy title. Still trying to figure out if I like that title or not. Don't know. It's kind of like Green Day's Father of All. Just kind of bleh, Kind of cringy. But kind of funny. Um, and while I haven't fallen for it in the way that I've fallen in love with some of the Slipknot albums yet. It's getting there. I'm getting there with it. Uh, just uh, four listens in. And it's really making me feel good. This is a really feel-good record. Kind of a happy uh, kind of standard of sounds coming out of this thing. And it can sound a little basic in places. But even that feels like it's in a good way. Like it's, it's like back to the basics rock and roll. And I wish he hadn't have promoted this as being weird, wacky experimentation time. And I feel like you should have said, hey, I'm making, I'm making a record. Making like a, a really fun rock record. That's what it's going to be. With some weird surprises. That's how it should have been uh, portrayed. Bef you know, not saying, hey, genre doesn't mean anything. I, I'm going to go crazy. He should have said, I'm making a rock record that maybe, maybe, you know, is just a lot of fun. That's how he should have described it so we wouldn't have been disappointed with the lack of, you know, there wasn't a, a, a soul song and there wasn't a, a bluegrass song and, and whatever. Gosh, I'm losing my voice. Um, so, I don't know what he was going for here with the sound, but if you told me this album was straight out of the 80s or 90s and I had no idea who he was, I think you could have fooled me with that. So it's a super fun, you know, to wrap things up. It's a super fun, easy to digest rock record. 
And it's definitely what the doctor ordered right now. It's definitely what the world needs. So I am giving. I'm Chris Norwood. I'm on a journey to hear every song ever recorded. So please like and subscribe. Thank you. Don't worry about any of that notification bell nonsense. Just like and subscribe. Don't even worry about the liking if you don't want to. Just subscribe, please. My ranking of Corey Taylor's CMFT 2020. I am giving CMFT three and a half wrestling belts out of five. Three and a half out of five. Thanks, guys. This has been a, a lot of fun. I got to go so I don't lose the rest of my voice. I've been screaming. I've actually been doing some Corey Taylor uh, songs on my guitar, my acoustic guitar over there. So I think that's why I'm losing my voice. I was trying to do some Corey Taylor vocals, and that's difficult. You guys have a good night.